everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and today we are gonna dye some twisted skeins of yarn. I'm taking some dry knit pick stroll fingering weight yarn, which is 75% superwash merino wool, 25% nylon. I'm adding on a removable nylon zip tie to help keep things ordered. And then I'm gonna twist the dry skein uh, so we can use this for our first layer of dyeing. Now, the thing that we're gonna do today that's a little bit different from dyeing twisted skeins of yarn in the past is that the three layers of dyeing I'm planning to do are all gonna be the same color. We are gonna use some Dharma True Black and layer that color three times, retwisting the skeins each time. I have done this type of layering in the past on untwisted skeins, showing how using the same amount of dye just all at once versus layering it on gives, uh, I guess, like a difference in the type of tonal effect you can get. But what I'm really curious to see is how variegated the yarn will feel after three layers of one color. Right here, we have a one, about a one and a half percent stock solution of true black, Dharma True Black Acid Dye, which means we have approximately one and a half grams of dye dissolved in 100 milliliters of water. So the recipe is not gonna be perfectly accurate because I have this approximately symbol here on the lid. <laughs> Therefore, I can't completely trust uh, the concentration, but my plan is to use 50 milliliters of this dye for each round, which would give us 150 milliliters of this dye total, or approximately 1.5 plus 0.75, so that would be 2.25 grams of dye, approximately on 300 grams of yarn. My dye bath is currently warming up here on the stove. Eventually I'm gonna move it to a hot plate on my countertop because I'm gonna film a Chemnitz Patreon behind the scenes live stream while I'm filming this episode. One of the perks that you can get through Patreon is you can join a monthly live stream where I'll stream while working on an episode of Dye Pot Weekly. It's a lot of fun and sometimes you can help shape the direction of the video midstream. But it gives patrons a little bit of an early access sneak peek Plus, they can see an unedited version of whatever it is I'm filming. But that's why I'll be moving to the countertop today. You can learn more about the Chemnitz Patreon at patreon.com slash Chemnitz. In my dedicated dye pot, I have 32 cups of water. Let's add three, four, five, six, seven, eight tablespoons of white vinegar. And now I'm bringing over 50 milliliters of our acid dye. We'll stir things up. Things are warming up, but it's not quite hot yet. And now I'm gonna come in and add our twisted skeins of yarn. Now, Stroll is a yarn base that does soak up liquid pretty quickly. Uh, so this first round is dry, and I'm not pressing the yarn too much, but I am sort of dipping it in. It's possible because the yarn is dry and therefore it's gonna soak in more liquid. We might get a little more coverage on this round, but we also might not because there is a little bit more resist with the yarn being dry. But the yarn should be really well saturated by the time we do our second dip. I'm just pressing this below the surface uh, to let things go. Um, since the dye bath, okay, let me see. It's warm, but really not close to hot. I think it could take a while for the color to clear on this round. So I'm gonna go ahead and wait. Well, maybe we'll check back in after 10 minutes, but I think it might take longer. These bubbles we're seeing are air coming out of the yarn. It's not boiling yet. It's been 10 minutes and we're still not seeing a lot of movement at the surface. Uh, things are still heating up because I added the yarn for this first round while things were still pretty cold. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just wait 20 more minutes. Normally we would just wait until the color absorbs. It's possible that that could happen a little bit faster. It's also possible it might take a while. So we'll check back in in about 20 minutes. It's been another 20 minutes and you know, I still can't see all the way to the bottom 
but we're definitely absorbing color in here. However, if I even just pick up the skein, you can see that we are gonna have a lot of tonal variation in here. It's gonna be lighter to darker, so that's gonna be good. But I think it still just needs a little bit more time. And it's once we're hot, I think the subsequent layers will go a little bit faster than this, but we still have a lot of pigment in there and not a lot of surface area, which is why things are overall a little bit slower than what they were before. But anyway, let's just wait until we get to a little bit more of a boil. It's been another 20 minutes. We are finally at a boil and most of the dye <laughs> has bound to our yarn. Um, I'm now going to remove these skeins. I'm going to reduce the heat to ye low so the pot stays warm, but we're going to need to let the yarn cool off so that way we can untwist and retwist it comfortably. We are now on my hot plate and I'm going to come in with the second round of dye. Another 50 milliliters of our approximately one and a half percent stock solution of true black. I'm going to stir this up and then we can go twist and untwist and retwist our skeins so we can get ready to put them in. All right, here are our twisted skeins and as we go to open them up, I'm going to squeeze out the extra water into our dye bath because why not? I did let these cool a little bit longer than I might normally uh, just because I knew that uh, that would be extra helpful for squeezing them out. All right, let's go ahead and untwist this yarn. So you can see that we have a lot of resist on here. We have a lot of white patches, pale gray patches, and then also darker gray patches on here. And so I'm just curious what happens if we layer the black on three times. Will we have white left? Will we not have white left? I'm not really sure how it'll turn out. And so that's when it's fun to try something like this again. Okay, and now before twisting for our second round, I'm gonna move the zip tie just a little bit. Uh, and then we're gonna twist, I'm a little bit off camera, but I'm holding one end against the counter because it's a little bit harder to twist the yarn when things are wet. Uh, because you don't want to stretch it out. But you can see we have a lot of white on the outside now. I expect uh, that we will end up with some white towards the center. Towards the center. I, I expect that in the final yarn we will have some white and some high contrast in there. Uh, but it's hard, I think, to know for sure. And I guess with the zip ties, and it's nice to have the zip ties because sometimes these will untwist in the <laughs> dye bath and having a zip tie on there means that it'll be easier to reorder things for the end. But I enjoy this technique with multiple colors and just kind of seeing how the colors layer and blend together. Uh, but I don't think I've done this multiple times with one color. What it should do is give us some really dark patches, a lot more medium patches, and then a couple light ones. I'm not sure how warm the electric hot plate is yet. We're clearly not at a boil, but we are definitely warm, uh, warmer than we were the very first time. So I'm now gonna add the yarn. And we can no longer see it because it, the dye bath is so dark. I'm gonna go ahead and set a timer for 20 minutes. I have a feeling it might take a little while and then we'll check back in. But you know what else I'm gonna do? This is something I don't do very much. I'm gonna put a lid on the pot and that should help trap some of the heat in. I don't know if that's gonna make things boil faster. You can tell me if trapping the steam in the pot helps things heat up faster. I don't know for sure, but anyway, we'll be back in 20 minutes. It's been 20 minutes and I am expecting, yeah, we still have a fair amount of color in here. It's just gonna be a slow process today, which is fine, which is totally fine. Um, so, you know, I will go work on some editing and I guess we'll come back in another 20 minutes. Now it sounds like we're boiling. Okay, it's been a while. <laughs> And so what I am going to do now 
is remove our yarn. I think we've got a little bit of color left in here, but that's fine. Oof. It's getting almost black on the outside. I'm getting excited, but I'm gonna set this yarn aside to cool so that way I can comfortably untwist it. And I'm gonna put the lid back on here so that's gonna stay nice and warm, but it is, I think, paler in there than it was before. Let's open up the yarn and see how we're looking after round two. And I am gonna take the yarn, once again, and squeeze it out in the pot. And so after the second round, we still have some white, uh, but we also are getting some much deeper patches in here. So opening this up. Yeah, we still, it's funny, because I think that what we're gonna end up is more coverage overall than if we had just dyed this once. Uh, you can see that we're getting a lot of contrast in here, but also there's a lot of different like black and grays as well. All right, and this time before I twist things, I'm trying to just arrange it so that way we have a section with more white, just visible. And then I could start twisting things the opposite way. I don't know why I never really do that. But we're gonna twist it up. And the goal is to have white, but also some of the gray, black, <laughs> black and gray on the outside uh, as we do, I guess, our next round. But I am trying to bring like a section that has a, maybe a bigger area of white towards the top just so that way we can help break this up a little bit. Uh, but now we also know to expect it to take a while and we may end up uh, needing to grab a skein of yarn to leave no dye behind as well if we're not absorbing everything completely which is totally fine. All right. It's totally okay if not everything ends up in the yarn. But yeah, I'm seeing lots of shades of gray in here. We still have color in our pot, but I'm debating, you know what? Nope, I'm gonna see the vision through. And if after a while, we still see a fair amount of color in there. Then we'll get just another skein of yarn to put in. All right, we've got another 50 milliliters. And this time I'm actually gonna rinse out the graduated cylinder. Also to leave no dye behind. There actually is not much dye left in our container. But when it comes to black dyes, we could have pushed. Uh, the amount of color that we had in here more for 300 grams of yarn. But the reason why I guess we d also didn't need to do that is because they're twisted. And so there are areas on here that are gonna have more than a one or even 2% depth of shade just because the same area is getting exposed to dye over and over. But anyway, I'm gonna wait 30 minutes and then we'll come back and check in. Okay, let's look and see how we're doing. You know, there's really not very much color left in here. Uh, I grabbed a skein of yarn to put in, but what is left is a little bit almost pastel compared to what we had before. Let me... Uh, okay, see how you can see to the bottom of the pot here? I can tell that that would be a very pastel gray uh, from what's left. So I think what I want to do here is turn off the heat. I'm going to unplug the hot plate. And now the hot plate is still hot. I didn't really mean to cover that, but I'm going to move this onto the second burner on the hot plate that was not hot. And I'm just gonna leave things here to cool off for 
a little while and we'll check back in in an hour or so. All right, it's been a little while and maybe not quite an hour, but I'm gonna go ahead and remove the yarn. The water is still warm, but most of the color for sure is in our yarn. And I'm ready to go on and use the dye bath for something else. So I am going to set our yarn aside uh, to cool and we will go and open up the skeins once they're cool and we're ready to wash them. Let's open up these skeins so we can wash them. And we have, I'm not sure if I would call it white left, as much as a very pale gray. We'll see if this one has some white. It's hard to say. It's hard to say. Certainly we have pastel areas. That's, there's no question about that. Uh, it's just whether or not we'll call them white. That's not a problem. And so now as we wash, wash our yarn, I'm gonna add some clear dish soap. All right, and let's see if we have any bleeding. Doesn't look like it. Okay, maybe we are having a little bit of something come out. The reason why I'm not that upset or concerned at this stage is that there was a lot of residue on the side of the pot when I was rinsing it out. And so hopefully this will resolve quickly. I'm gonna fill up the basin again. And for good measure, I'm gonna add a little bit of soap. And I'm gonna leave the yarn in here in the basin full of soapy water to just soak for, I think, five minutes. Okay, it has been five minutes. Oh, and I'm not seeing anything else come out. That's good, that's good. I was nervous, but let's go ahead and rinse out all of the soap. Because I noticed whatever was on the edge of the pan rinsed right off with soap. Um, but it was sort of stuck with water. So probably that first wash with soap got everything out. But anyway, we're just gonna check again and we're looking good. So I'm gonna finish rinsing out the soap. I'll put the yarn through my spin dryer and then we'll hang it up to dry. And here is our yarn that we dyed twisted three times. There are some larger white and gray patches but there's also a lot of like deep charcoal gray and even some spots that do feel black. This was a really great way to get so many tones of one color on the yarn. We got really great coverage and it isn't as patchy as dyeing a twisted skein of yarn just one time could sometimes be. I would suggest doing this project again on with a color that breaks. However, I did dye a twisted skein of yarn. One of the first times I dyed a twisted skein of yarn in Wilton's Violet. And I was very surprised that there was very little breaking that happened there. And one of the reasons why the color didn't break very much is the resist from having the twisted skein. When the yarn is twisted, it's hard for the dye to access some of those areas that are towards the center in the more tightly wound patches. And so if you have a color that breaks, because things absorb slower overall, it is less dramatic. Which isn't to say that we couldn't try that, but I am not very optimistic that we would see something like really amazing and dramatic. I think that it would be more fun to dye your twisted skein a few times in one color and then over dye it in a second color. So for example, if we were to take this yarn and then go and dye it in a bright pink or a bright blue, I think that that would be really, really stunning. Uh, but it's also a lot of steps. And so you have to consider if that is worth the time to get the result that you want. But I do love the way that this yarn turned out. And I mean, honestly, now I can't stop thinking about this over dyed in a bright blue. <laughs> so who knows, maybe I'm gonna have to do that. <laughs> But anyway, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz. Please subscribe, do all the YouTube-y things, and thank you so much for watching.